Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Perfect Pairing SEO and Google Analytics. I want to give everyone a heads up that this is not just a presentation. This is a conversation. So feel free to post any questions or comments to YouTube or tweet to us directly at RPS123Shoot, S-H-O-O-T. And if you're uh, listening after the live broadcast, still ask away. Uh, we'll follow up uh, and post any comments uh, on the on either Twitter or on YouTube. Okay, for those of you who don't know us, I am Amanda Sutt, and I'm the creative director at Rock Paper Scissors. Um, we are a branding and marketing firm, and we have been in the business for over 30 years. So we have seen a lot of change and done a lot of changing ourselves to keep up with the time. And we keep uh, just to give you a little background, we focus on our clients' brands, and that's not just the logo and the marketing collateral, but the entire experience. Part of that experience is tracking and knowing if it's working. So joining us today uh, for the webinar is our content marketer, Valerie Kinney. Hello, Valerie. Good afternoon, everyone. Excellent. All right, let's dive into this. So how many times have you opened up Google to search for a place to eat or find a particular product or service you needed recently? If you're like many others, you use Google or other search engines on a regular basis to find what you need. But how many times have you gotten results that weren't relevant? It's really frustrating. Um, and now think about whether your own customers may have some of those same frustrating experiences um, before they found you as well. That's why it's important to know what, uh, what SEO and Google Analytics are and how using each can help improve your site, this, improve the website experience for your audience, uh, as well as your search engine ranking. Okay, so first, what is SEO? Um, SEO, or more specifically, search engine optimization, is defined by Yoast as the practice of optimizing websites to make them reach a high position in Google or another search engine's search results. So what search engine optimization does is it focuses on organic or non-paid search results. And there are quite a few things you can do to improve your website's SEO, which we'll cover a little bit later on in the presentation. But before we get to that, there is one thing we want you to keep in mind about it. And that is SEO is a lot like eating a healthy diet. Um, you don't automatically lose 50 pounds as soon as you start changing the way that you eat. It's a slow process that will pay dividends if you're persistent and diligent with it, and the same goes for SEO. Mm -hmm. So just to give you a little background, um, the basic concepts of SEO has not changed in the last 10 plus years. Um, however, that's not to say Google, Yahoo, or Bing's algorithms haven't changed. They typically change because people are trying to find shortcuts um, around and get to get their websites up there. Um, so just want to walk you through some of the things, because it's a little fun, uh, to remember what people have attempted in the past uh, to, to get where they, to get at the top of that list. Um, so a couple things that they, people would include um, keywords in the domain. Um, and this is like, um, for instance, using uh, seomarketingtips.com um, as opposed to Rock, paper, scissors .com, not using the name of your business. So trying to stuff keywords into your domain. So that does help people understand what you do, but that does not establish what who you are um, and how to distinguish or differentiate you from somebody else. Um, people would also stuff keywords into the website content, uh, also using irrelevant keywords. Um, so like if, for instance, you're searching for Home Depot, uh, like a local hardware store would put Home Depot in, so their results would come up. So like, it's deceptive, and so that creates frustration. Even though you might think you're trying to be, you know, wise and, and gain awareness, if you're taking somewhere where they don't want to go, um, that does not help help build a trusting relationship with your potential um, customer. So another thing, <clears throat> excuse me, people have done, they have tried to write for search engines instead of their actual human audience. So. Um, you've probably come across content like this where it's just very almost robotic sounding and it doesn't have a natural flow. And so that's what people were trying to do so that they could get the search results and it just was not pretty content. Also, uh, people used to use uh, automatically generated content. Um, and it's a lot like uh, writing for search engines. It, it's hard to read, it doesn't make sense. Um, so that was another another 
what they thought was a smooth tactic. Mm -hmm. And then also adding pages to the website that have little or no original content on there. It might have just been a copy of another page with maybe one tiny change, mm -hmm. which is just... Yeah. There's no point. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to frustrate your human user who's going to spend money with you. So keep it original. All right. So let's let's take this a little step further and um, talk about how Google pulls the results uh, when people search for a certain word or phrase. So the simple explanation is that Google will look for new content with those keywords and phrases, um, as well as looking for people to come to your site in order to determine how you rank. With that in mind, there are some um, SEO best practices you'll want to keep in mind as you optimize your site in order to see improvement in your search engine ranking. So first up, regularly update your website to make sure it's current. Um, your website is never done. Um, you always want to be thinking about what is, you know, phase two, phase three, phase four. Um, it is a living, breathing organism. You also want to create new content that your audience wants to hear that's relevant to them and the work you're doing. So um, this is more the blog content um, side of things. So examples of how you can do that, you can create blog posts um, based off of your frequently asked questions, or um, you can help your audience solve a problem, share important or helpful news. Those are the types of things that usually do pretty well for people um, when they're first starting to get into blogging and trying to create that new content so there's always something new and fresh on their websites. You also want to make sure that um, keywords have been added in the right places. You want to have it on your page titles and your descriptions and your headings and in your content. Image titles, image alt text, there's a lot of different places, but you want to make sure you're using the right type of keywords in the right places. And there are a lot of tools out there now that will really help you with this. Mm -hmm. um, so it's you do not need to be an SEO expert in order to um, optimize your website. And that brings us to Google Analytics. So just to give you the quick, you know, five cent overview, um, Google Analytics is is the public version of a lot of the data that Google is using to make a better product. Um, and it is a service that they offer for free. Um, and it helps you keep track of what's going on in your site. Uh, it's especially, and it can, you can definitely use this free tool um, for uh, tracking your SEO. Um, and we're going to walk through a couple of these. There are definitely um, pay-to-play SEO tools that are going to be more robust. But if you're just getting into this, this is a great place to start. So first up, um, one of the things you can look at is your site traffic. And this is the number of visitors and visits your website receives. Um, so this is like human eyes that are coming to your website and checking things out. And we recommend when you're looking at your site traffic to compare the current month to the previous month as well as the current year to the previous year. Um, and that gives you the chance to look and see, okay, were there any major increases or decreases in traffic over the past year? And that'll also help you determine um, when you look at your past content, whatever new stuff you were putting out, okay, this is was um, resonating. You know, last year in March, we did really great with our interior design topic, so we need to talk about that again. Or, you know, whatever the case may be for your business, um, really just kind of seeing what's drawing in those new visitors. Also, traffic sources. As we mentioned earlier, um, when it comes to SEO, it's all about organic traffic. But um, traffic sources can be so much more than um, that direct traffic and the search engine traffic. You've also got social media, email marketing, referral traffic. The list is Pretty long. pretty long, and um, that's just a handful of it. So once you know what's leading your visitors to your site, you can make adjustments as you need to. So if you see that the bulk of your traffic is coming from social media and you're not getting as much in that um, direct or organic traffic from the search engines, um, that's when you want to sit down and refocus and say, okay, what can we do with our SEO to start bumping that organic traffic back up? So acquisitions. Um, is another, it's a good tool to look at. It doesn't help you as much as it used to, um, but it's at least useful in showing you how much of your traffic is organic, um, which can also help you determine which online marketing tactics are best for you for bringing in your traffic. And one of the reasons this is not as helpful is there's um, a lot of privacy settings, mm -hmm. um, so not all data is as visible as it used to be. 
Um, the next step is keywords. Um, and this similar to, to acquisitions, it's we don't get to see as much of it, but you can see what keywords people are using to find your site. If they're only using like your name to find your site, it means that they're probably just searching for you and they're not necessarily finding you um, in, in the idea of inbound marketing. They're not um, finding you from other sources, people who know you are already coming to you. And the goal of SEO is for people who don't know you to start finding you as well. So that's what you want to start looking for when you look at keywords. Is it's a good measure to see if they're actually finding you um, or you're finding new people. And then uh, page monitoring. Um, page monitoring allows you to see the content page uh, page pages visitors are coming to you through. Um, and that's always a really good to see if they're coming out of the homepage, they're coming through a specific article. Um, so that really helps give you an idea of what's attracting your new visitors. So when we're thinking about that content mix um, and getting fresh new content out there, um, you want to put that content there so people can find you through Google, but you can help this case out also by driving people to your website from different sources. So your social media channels, your email marketing, um, digital advertising is another area you can get into. It won't help as much with the organic traffic, but it can help get people to your site. And those are just a few of the things. Um, so when you're sitting down looking at your marketing plan, um, it's really helpful to determine your content themes first, and then you can get a little bit more um, granular as you narrow things down and start planning that content mix. Um, so to make this a habit, we always recommend creating a content calendar. Um, and if you can get specific with dates and times for when you want to send out those content updates, that's great. If you just know, okay, on the third week of May, I'm going to do this. That's a good place to start. Um, because what we found is once you have a plan in place, you're more likely to actually, actually follow through with things. Um, I had a teacher um, in college that always said, if it's not on the calendar, it doesn't exist. And I have found that to be true over and over again in my professional life, that if I actually put things on a calendar, it's going to happen. It may not happen exactly when I want it to, but it at least gives me a plan so that I have a follow through. Exactly. And if you want help with a content calendar, we have past videos uh, that go through the process of content calendar planning. All right. So hopefully we've helped you uh, better understand SEO and how it works with Google, Google Analytics uh, and to see uh, why these are very important for understanding what drives people to your website and how to keep them coming back. All right, so we are now ready to take some questions. Um, and we already, so go ahead and post if you want. Uh, we received some questions uh, ahead of time that we'll start with those. All right, so first up, I wanna learn more about Google Analytics. Are there any good resources you can recommend? Uh, Google, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they do a great job with their write-up and explanation um, if you're using Google Analytics, they have great helpful tools in there, um, but the content that they've used for basically for their FAQ and help resources mm -hmm. are fantastic and they keep it up to date, so it is great. They also have something called Analytics Academy. I've went through some of the videos with that and everything that's um, video-based and you can kind of do it at your own pace. Um, mm -hmm. Just a lot of really good information in there and they've kind of separated it out between the basics for people who are just getting into it and then um, they've got some more courses that are a little more in depth. So that's another one I would recommend. Yep. Right, next up, my site is ranking on page two of Google search results for the keywords I'm using. I know my keywords are relevant, so what can I do to improve my rank? All right, there's a two, I'm gonna answer a question that's not asked on this first. Um, so one important thing when you see your ranking, if you're doing a search, Google is re getting very customized with the results that they produce. They're basing the results they display on your past habits. So I'm bringing this up because you might see it on page two, but somebody else will see it on page one, and then another person won't see it until page 10. And so a lot of it has to do with your search habits. So I just wanna say that first. All right, back to the real question. Um, so the, it is, I know my keywords are relevant, so what can I do to improve your rank? So there's two main things that, I mean, there's a lot that goes into, into Google, Yahoo, Bing, all these different search, their algorithms, but it comes into two things is, one is, do you have new content that you're regularly adding? Because Google's job, Bing, Yahoo, whoever they are, their job is to produce good results for people searching. So they wanna know that this is an active website, so if you're continually adding content to it, it is an active website. 
also if people are actually going to the website and using the resources. So those are the two things that you really want to think about um, whenever you're going down this SEO rabbit hole. Um, so if your keywords, it, it, there's a couple answers to this. Give it time. Uh, we talked about SEO being, a, you know, um, like a, like eating healthy, there's a diet involved in it. Um, but there's also the, you might want to look at, at your keywords itself. There are a lot of sites out there will tell you which keywords are doing better and give you some feedback and ranking on it. Um, but you could also be using super popular keywords um, that you're just not going to be able to um, get above um, in order to, to pull some rank with that. So there's a lot of things that go into that. Um, and that's why you SEO is important, but it's not the only thing you want to be doing for your for your marketing. You know, you want to be doing social media and email marketing, um, even some paid placements um, for for like Google Ads or or any other pay per click kind of campaign. So you want to make sure that you have a good mix of it. Um, and so this is really just talking about how do you get organic traffic. Mm -hmm. A lot of an answer for a yeah. small question. All right, last one we have right here. I was looking at my keyword report in Google Analytics and the word other in parentheses is the top result. What does that mean? Okay, so we touched on this a little bit before. Um, because of privacy settings and um, laws out there, um, people can opt out of having their results um, being specifically displayed. And that's typically what that's showing um, is we can't see what it is. Um, and so that's... It's not fun. It'd be great if we could see all of it, but I also respect people's privacy. So, mm -hmm. anything else? I think that's all it. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us for The Perfect Pairing, SEO, and Google Analytics. A recap will be posted on our blog soon, so stay tuned to 123shoot.com. Uh, we'll be sharing the date and time and topic of our next webinar um, in the next couple weeks as well, uh, so be on the lookout for that. Thanks, everyone.